but uh, Jordan, and would you introduce yourself? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Jordan Milholland, Kansas Legislative Research Department. Um, our colleague Andrew Fenzen is also on WebEx with us, and I'll go ahead and let my colleague to my right introduce herself as well. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I'm Jessa Farmer, and I'm also with the Legislative Research Department. Thank you. Go ahead. My name is... My name is Zach Cudi, and I am your broadcast AV technician. My name is Logan Brown. I'm also part of the broadcast team. Thank you. Now we'll start with uh, uh, Jennifer. Uh, would you introduce yourself and uh, tell us your responsibility? Thank you. She is new to the committee. Uh, we'll skip Connie. Uh, Senator Gossage, would you introduce yourself, please? Thank you. I am Senator Gossage from District 9. Senator Ethan Corson from Senate District 7 in Northeast Johnson County. Senator Dinah Sykes from Senate District 21. Senator Rick Wilburn, Senate District 35. Senator Ty Masterson, District 16. Senator Rick Billinger, Senate 40, which is western part of the state. Senator Rick Cluse, District 19, which is this area. Senator Richard Hildebrand, Senate District 13, that's southeast Kansas, also known as God's Country. Uh, also, Senator Erickson is online. Uh, Senator Erickson, would you care to make a comment? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Senator Renee Erickson, District 30. Thank you. And I think also we miss Jason Long, who is online. He is with the uh, Revisor's Office. Jason, do you care to make a comment? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Jason Long, uh, Assistant Revisor for the Redistricting Committee. And uh, we also have Eileen Ma on WebEx, who will also be assisting the committee from the revisor's office. Thank you, uh, Elaine and uh, Jason, for uh, your introduction. Uh, committee, <clears throat> this is the um, first official committee we are having. As you know, we have conducted 114, uh, or excuse me, 14 town hall meetings, uh, in addition to four statewide virtual meetings. We received a lot of input. KLRD has received up to 500 pieces of uh, input as it relates to the redistricting issue. So today, what we want to do is go through uh, a little informational hearing so that we all kind of are up to speed and reminded again about uh, where we're headed. So we'll start off um, uh, with Jason Long, Officer, of Reviser of Statutes, and he will talk to us about redistricting guidelines, committee rules, and the bill process. Please proceed, Jason. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you should have at your seats the guidelines and criteria for the 2022 uh, legislative redistricting. These were the guidelines adopted by the redistricting advisory group um, last month. Um, the front page are the state legislative redistricting guidelines. These would be for the Senate and House of Representative uh, districts for the state of Kansas. Um, you can see uh, on bullet point one, those would be based on the 2020 U.S. decennial census numbers. Um, and in bullet point two, uh, the district should be as numerically equal in population as practical. Um, there is uh, an allowance of a plus or minus 5% deviation from the ideal population by the case law. Um, this is what is known as a safe harbor um, for state legislatures and uh, districting state uh, legislative districts, um, which basically means that um, if you go outside of that plus or minus 5% deviation from the ideal population, and there is a legal challenge to the redistricting map, the state may have a burden of justifying that population deviation. But if you stay within the plus or minus 5%, um, you are within what is known as a safe harbor um, for state legislative districts. Uh, bullet point three, you'll note uh, redistricting plans have neither the purpose nor the effect of diluting minority voting strength. 
And bullet point four, these are additional guidelines subject to the ideal population guideline. Um, districts should be compact and contiguous as possible. Uh, should uh, preserve existing political subdivisions to the extent possible. Should recognize communities of interest. Um, should protect, um, I'm sorry, should prevent um, contests between incumbent members of the legislature whenever possible and should be easily identifiable and understandable by the voters. If you turn over to the second page of the document, these are guidelines for congressional redistricting plans. These are for the four U.S. House of Representative seats. Again, they're based on the 2020 U.S. decennial census. Um, congressional district seats should be as nearly equal in population as practicable. Uh, the case law does not provide for a, a safe harbor on congressional uh, district plans. And so if there is a legal challenge to a congressional plan, there may be a burden on the state uh, to justify any deviation from um, absolute equal population uh, among the districts. Uh, bullet point three, again, the plans have neither the purpose or effect of diluting minority voting strength. And then bullet point four, you'll see similar guidelines to the state maps, compact and contiguous as possible, recognition of communities of interest, um, preserving core existing congressional districts whenever possible. And then one for congressional districting, the last point is to try to keep whole counties in the same congressional district to preserve that county community of interest. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, um, I'd be happy to take any questions on the guidelines and criteria. Thank you, uh, Jason, that's excellent. I think this is the time, if you have any questions uh, from Jason as it relates to the guidelines that have been adopted by the advisory committee. Seeing no questions, uh, Jason, we'll move on to the uh, committee rules. Um, you should have committee rules in front of you. These are, are standard um, rules for, for a, a committee. Um, you will note there is a additional rule towards the end um, that basically references the technical rules that I believe Jordan is going to review um, later during this meeting, um, simply requiring that maps that are drawn um, to be presented to the committee uh, need to comply with those technical rules. Um, those are basically adopted by reference into the committee's rules. Uh, Mr. Yes, Chairman, sir. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Again, uh, are there any questions about the rules that have been approved and adopted uh, by this committee as per the chairman and uh, as per Senate rules? Are there any questions? Yes, Senator Sykes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a question. Um, will we be allowing virtual testimony for the committee? I, I'm sorry, I did not hear that. Will we be allowing virtual testimony or conferees? According to the rules, we are. Okay. Thank you. I knew that was at your discretion. I just said thank you. Are there other questions? Seeing none, uh, for information for the committee, the rules are adopted. We now will move to the bill process. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to just make a few comments to the committee. Uh, because the bill process is slightly different for redistricting bills compared to your um, standard substantive bill that goes through the legislature. Uh, for starters, um, because the bills are required to be based on uh, a map of the newly redrawn districts, um, our process starts actually in the research department for redistricting bills. And so uh, any request um, for legislation that uh, would reflect a map, um, we're going to direct um, the member to um, the research department and probably particularly Jordan um, to start there with drawing the map. Once the map is drawn and research has done its technical review under the technical rules, then he will provide the revisor's office with the underlying data on the voting blocks um, that that map represents. And then our office will take that data and compose it into a bill draft legally describing each of the districts um, that are part of the map. Um, and so that's a slight change in the process where you would start with research with your request and then it moves over to the revisor's office. And this is the case for bills you want to introduce 
uh, amendments for the committee and floor amendments for the Senate floor. You would start those requests with a map um, with research and then they would move that data over to the revisor's office for the legal document drafting. Uh, second, I wanted to bring the committee's attention to uh, another uh, aspect of amending redistricting bills and uh, staff would strongly encourage that the committee um, go with a process that you know as a gut and go uh, for amending redistricting bills. Uh, this would be to strike the map in the underlying bill and replace it with an entire map um, that is the amendment to be added in. Uh, this ensures that no portion of the state is omitted from any district um, in the bill and that no portion of the state is counted in multiple districts, um, is covered by multiple districts in the bill. Um, it just ensures that whatever map is represented in the bill has been through research's technical review um, and complies with, with those rules. Uh, finally, I just want to draw the committee's attention to the fact that there is a final approval process for the Senate and House legislative districts for the state of Kansas. Under the state constitution, once a bill uh, that has maps for both the Senate and the House uh, passes the legislature and uh, becomes law either through the governor's signature or without the governor's signature, the attorney general is directed by the constitution to then submit those maps to the Kansas Supreme Court for a final review as to the constitutional validity of those plans. And the Kansas Supreme Court um, has to provide a final approval of those plans before they go into effect. So there's an additional approval by the Kansas Supreme Court for Senate and can. Kansas Senate and Kansas House of Representative uh, redistricting plans. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to answer any further questions. Uh, thank you, Jason. Committee, are there any questions? See, seeing none, we'll now we'll move to uh, Jordan Maholland uh, with the Research Department uh, to talk about the technical rules. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Jordan Milholland, Kansas Legislative Research Department. Uh, you should all have in front of you a copy of the technical committee rules. I won't be going through every single provision in here, but I'll try to summarize as best as possible and then we'll answer questions as necessary. Uh, so basically, this is, as it says, these are the technical requirements for submitting maps. Um, it goes through sets um, when, when KLRD will need to receive maps to process them, the types of files that need to be within these maps and that sort of thing. Uh, so to begin with, this states that all plans submitted to any committee of the legislature, it will become a public record. And this is for um, uh, any map, regardless of whether it's from the outside public or from a legislator, as long as it goes to committee, it'll become a public record, just like other testimony. Um, any plan submitted uh, to KLRD from a legislator, that will uh, be confidential until it's submitted to the committee at that time. Um, minutes of the committees will be kept just like other committees and notices of all those meetings and hearings will be published and posted uh, in the same manner as other committees. Uh, as I stated um, and has been stated previously, plans prepared outside KLRD or caucus office must be submitted for technical verification. And um, any plan that's submitted from an outside person must have a legislator sponsor. And um, this is where I'll deviate from the rules just a bit. On our KLRD website, we've um, updated the instructions on there for members of the public and outside groups that are looking to submit maps. We have instructions on there for how to do that. We have a link to these rules, and we also have a form that folks need to fill out that provide us their information um, that needs to be submitted with the map, but also includes that sponsorship information. So we will know um, who the sponsor of that plan is before we process it. Um, this also states that all the plans must be a complete statewide plan, so no individual districts can be part of a plan. It needs to be the whole plan um, in that map when it's submitted. And then also all pieces of census geography must be assigned. Uh, we've listed here how to submit those plans to the Legislative Research Department. Um, the, uh, the plans also must be submitted on a non-returnable flash drive. And we also need, as I stated, all that information about the person submitting it, all their contact information, so that when, if there is an issue, we can contact that person and the sponsoring legislator uh, so that those issues can be fixed. 
Uh, we're also asking for a PDF file containing an image of the map, uh, and that just is a way so we can see what you're trying to depict with the map and can tell um, once we pull it into our software that that's still the case. Um, this also includes information about the file types. We are clarifying that um, certain sites such as days redistricting might output a file without uh, quotation marks as listed here. Uh, as long as that district information is complete and it's in CSV format, we can pull that into our software. And um, we do clarify that on our website just so folks know exactly um, what they'll need to have in those files. Uh, we also list here some information that must be provided with the maps. Uh, it's got some detailed report information such as deviation, population information, demographic information. Um, we do not need to have a breakdown of the race categories because uh, as long as we have the state total population for each piece of geography, that can be pulled into our software and then can be, um, that report can be generated from our software. So we don't need that detailed of information, but we do need the total population. Uh, this also talks about the staff review of plans. Um, as I stated, they have to be a statewide plan and all geography must be assigned. Uh, KLRD staff will review the plans to determine whether it complies with the guidelines and KLRD is now responsible for converting or um, fixing files that either are corrupted, may not be the right file format, um, or there may be an issue with the map. We will reach out and let that person know that we have an issue with their file and the legislator who's sponsoring that as well. Uh, this also talks about the census data that has to underlie the maps, just basically says it has to be the 2020 census information. Um, please note too, and this is part of the guidelines, Districts must be contiguous. Um, water bodies will be treated as land. This also lists the number of districts. So Senate plans must have 40 districts. Um, we also have listed the deviation as Jason talked about in the guidelines. And we also listed the congressional deviation as well. So all that should be in one place here for folks that are reviewing their plans to submit. Finally, this talks about the role of KLRD. It states that staff will be available to legislators who need assistance and that we can provide data and hard copies of maps. Um, it also says that individuals of the legislature can work with us and those uh, dealings with us are not, they're confidential and not public knowledge uh, unless you decide to submit your map um, to committee. And then finally, we're able to respond to requests for information from the public as time uh, as necessary. So. Uh, if we have time and we're able to help out, we'd be glad to respond to those requests. So, uh, Mr. Chair, that concludes my review of the rules. I'd be happy to uh, address any questions. Uh, thank you, Jordan. Very good. Are there any questions of Jordan on the technical rules? Seeing none, uh, Jordan, we'll let you proceed on with the uh, current congressional and state maps. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we will be pulling up a map on the screen here, so I will take just a second to uh, have that map shared. Okay. And Andrew, I might see if you can make that full screen if you can. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I wanted to start off by talking about the state as a whole, and then I'll move into the congressional map first. And some of this is information you've heard before, but I wanted to go ahead and review it again so it's fresh in everyone's minds. So as of Census Day, April 1st, 2020, Kansas was determined to have a state population of 2,937,880, and that was a gain of 84,762 people since the last uh, uh, census in 2010. For the congressional maps, as we stated previously in our other meetings, Kansas did not gain or lose a seat. We still have four seats. And uh, as a reminder, the standard is as numerically equal in population as practicable. So those districts really need to be uh, as close to equal as they can be. That means uh, the ideal district is 734,470 for these congressional districts. And currently, as you can see on the map here, we've got the different deviations shown. So the more orange a district is, the farther uh, negative it is from that deviation from that ideal number. And green, District 3, is actually above that ideal number. Um, so the range currently right now is uh, District 3 is 7.87% over, and District 1 is 4.59% under. Uh, 
And with those maps that you have at your seat, we actually have the detailed numbers there. So if you wanna see exactly what the populations are and the deviations, you can take a look at that. And I should also mention that these maps are on the KLRD website. So if you need a digital copy, you can access it on there. We also have the state house, Senate and uh, county level maps on there as well. Moving on to the Senate map, I'll have Andrew pull up the Senate map. So the Senate map is similar. We show that the darker orange districts actually are more below that ideal number and the darker green districts are more above that ideal number. Uh, again, the redistricting advisory group approved a deviation of plus or minus 5% and that's in the guidelines as well. What that means is you can have either plus or minus 3,672 people on either side of uh, the ideal district number. The ideal district number is 73,447 persons. Uh, so that means there's a range of between 69,775 and 77,119 persons. And if you need that information, it's listed in the guidelines so you can see those numbers exactly. Currently, uh, we have uh, quite a bit of range in the districts. The highest district is 19.94% over, and the lowest district is 10.77% under. So that's the range that we're sitting at currently. Andrew, if you could scroll down to the next page. Uh, okay, sorry, I guess we don't have an inset on there um, of the Sedgwick and Johnson counties, but we do have those numbers listed on there. Uh, so if you wanna see those individual districts, you can see what those exact numbers are. And so, Mr. Chair, that's what I have for the population. I'd be happy to pause there and answer questions before we move on. Uh, are there any questions uh, from Jordan about uh, any of this, these maps? Seeing none, I'll let you proceed. Okay. So, uh, so I wanted to talk about some of the decisions of the redistricting advisory group, and that also kind of rolls into the map making process. So if it's okay with the chair, I'll, I'll roll those all into one. Okay, perfect, thank you. So uh, the redistricting advisory group met three times during the interim. At the second meeting, the group made decisions on the public meetings. So we held 14 in-person meetings at the same location as the 2011 meetings. Uh, they also approved um, just different uh, procedural things for that, such as streaming online and remote participation by members. Uh, as part of the map making process at the December meeting, they made some decisions. Uh, so uh, the first decision was to require a legislative sponsor. That's outlined in the guidelines uh, or in the technical committee rules, and I've already discussed that today. They also set the deviations of the plus or minus 5% that we've discussed today. Uh, decided to require the entire state be drawn in plans. The next decision was to require technical review before committee. So any maps that will be submitted to this committee will need to have gone through our KLRD technical review process uh, and be submitted to us so that we can run the reports and make sure it's within those parameters that have been set. Again, those maps become public record once submitted to the committee. So I just wanted to reiterate that for everyone. Uh, next was, and this is something Jason touched upon, uh, requiring that amendments be a gut and go. Uh, so I won't explain that any further because we've already discussed that. Uh, the next piece I have is digital access. So KLRD will be hosting these maps once they're submitted to committee on our website. So we will have a, a link you can click on. You can see a PDF of the maps and also have the reports available to you before committee so that you can go through that information and the public will also be able to access that. Again, that's once they are submitted to committee so they will not be on there until submitted to committee. Uh, I've already discussed the public records. Uh, just one other thing I wanted to highlight, the State Board of Education districts, since we'll be dealing with that here on the Senate side, those are built upon the State Senate districts. There's 10 of those State Board districts, so each of those will comprise four Senate districts. And then finally, um, the layers. So um, there will be different amounts of information available to legislators drawing maps. We'll have the home seat layer available. We will have population information, voting results, election results, and demographic information available to legislators um, in our redistricting software. Um, I've already discussed the technical committee rules. Those were adopted as presented, and then the guidelines were also adopted as presented. Um, so I'll stop just to see if there's any questions with that before I go to the map making process. 
Again, committee, any questions? Yes, Senator Billinger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just making sure I, I understand this right. You said, so the, the, on the Senate, uh, ideal was the 73,000, but we could go as low as 69,775. Is that correct? Correct. That would be right at that minus 5% deviation. And, and as high as 77,119, correct? Correct. So, so any of these, I'm just going to use one, for instance, in my area is uh, 69,574 in the 39th right. district. Okay, so as long as that got over the 69,775, if it was 70 or, I mean, we, we, we got parameters there that we can use to adjust. I mean, as, as there's not a certain number we need to get to other than as stay within that window, correct? Correct, yes. You, so you just have that 5% on either side of that number uh, and within this range here. So whatever, you know, decisions you want to make and in, in picking up those people, that will put that district within that 5%. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, very good, committee. Uh, go ahead, uh, Jordan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so I just wanted to highlight the map making process, kind of going along with what Jason had talked about with the bill process. Uh, so for legislators, you're either able to draw with your caucus staff. Uh, each of the caucuses has an office set up and a computer. They can sit down with you and work on a map with you. Or um, if you prefer, you can also work with KLRD. We have a team uh, on standby waiting for any, any legislator who'd like to sit down and draw a map with our team. We can set up an appointment to do that as well. Uh, so I just wanted to highlight that for the group. And then for the public, uh, we've already kind of talked about that. We've got the instructions on our KLRD website for outside organizations and individuals who want to submit maps. We've got the form that they'll need to fill out along with the sponsorship information. That form either requires a signature by the sponsor to tell us that that person is sponsoring a specific plan, or it has uh, instructions that tell them the legislator can email us to say that they are sponsoring this individual plan. And that way we know um, for, for the legislator that they're wanting to sponsor this individual plan. We'll need a form for each plan that's submitted. So if your group, you know, of a group that wants to submit five plans, they'll need five forms submitted to us. Um, those plans, they can, or the, the forms can be on the thumb drive that they give us with the plans on it. Um, I think I've hit everything on that. Just wanted to make sure on my sheet here that I didn't miss something. Um, again, all that's on our website. So anybody that's interested, they can visit KLRD um, at ksledgeresearch.org. And then we have a redistricting page that they can link to on there for that information. Uh, so Mr. Chair, I'd be happy to answer any final questions uh, for the group. Uh, thank you, uh, Jordan. Um, any questions from the committee? I thank uh, you and Jason uh, very much uh, for the great job of uh, explaining this uh, committee. Uh, you're very uh, fortunate to be on this committee that will go down in history, I hope, uh, in a positive light. So we do have a big challenge ahead of us. I will uh, mention two things before we adjourn. Number one, if there's someone in the audience or someone online that would like to be notified of committee meetings or other announcements, feel free to call uh, Jennifer Forrester here. She will uh, put you on the list for notifications. Uh, number two is we will be establishing another committee meeting sometime next week, which is to be determined. And after we uh, kind of get uh, the ball rolling, you'll be the first to know. So with that, thank you for being here.